Thank you guys. You can be seated. Father, we thank you so much for this time together, a time of worship, and a time of celebrating in this season that you are Emmanuel, God with us. We thank you for that truth. Pray that you bless the rest of this time we have today. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Kitty. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Good morning and Merry Christmas. So glad to have you guys here today to worship together uh, with New City Church. My name is Kenny. If we haven't met yet, one of the pastors here. And uh, just to get you familiar with the place and, and give you a couple uh, announcements um, before our break. Um, first of all, if you haven't uh, visited us here before, if you need a restroom, you're right through that door to your left. Um, if you want coffee or and or water, it's over there. Um, and in just a moment, if you uh, want to check your kids into our kids' ministry, there's a check-in table right out this side. And um, yeah, let's see. Just have a, a also if you're if you're new here, if it's your first or second time, or um, you want you're looking to get connected with the church to find out more about us or how you can get connected. Best way to do that is to fill out a connect card, and you can do that digitally. I don't think we even have any actually printed out. You you can't fill it out like with a pen. You have to do it digitally. But there's an easy link for that right up here at newcitysd.com slash connect card. Or if you want a QR code, that's even easier. If you want to get on our, uh, we send out a monthly newsletter. Um, if you want to know what's going on with the church or what the next event is, that's uh, this is the way to get connected. So please fill that out. And then um, let me see, what other announcements do we have? I can't remember right now because I feel like there's a lot in my mind. Anyone feel like that with Christmas time? There's a lot in your mind? Um, yeah. <laughs> so I'm in there with you. Yeah, Liz. So if anyone wants to connect and you're new. Um, oh, that's today, right? Yeah, that's today. I'm headed to El Sarabe for the joining. Who knows more about the church? And oh, we can oh, get you connected. Yes, this is Liz here, leader of our Connect team. And if you're New and wanting to get connected to what's going on here at New City Church, they're doing a Connect lunch today after service right down the street in El Zarape. It's a great restaurant uh, with Mexican food a block or two down the way. So she's waving at you right there if you want to go and get connected. That's a great way to do that. Um, one other announcement we have is uh, seeing uh, something called Seeing Jesus Together. Seeing Jesus together. Um, how many of you are here are familiar with our CBR journals? Community Bible reading? Most. Yeah, it's a very high percentage. All right. So what's seeing, Je uh, seeing Jesus together is the new CBR journal. So basically, they have changed the name, but they've kept the same content as the journal, but they've given us more content, which actually... Um, it's, it's an easy tool to get together in groups. So a lot of times CBR um, is meant to kind of be shared with the community, but sometimes it's easy just to have your own devotional and it just stays there. But they've added some content that actually makes it really easy uh, uh, for groups to kind of do a devotional together and share what God's been showing them. And um, it's something that we're really excited about. We've ordered uh, a lot of those. If you want to um, reserve your copy um, they're going to be coming in, uh, I think actually they're going to be delivered this week so we can get them in time um, for next Sunday and have them before January starts. Um, so yeah, you're going to hear a lot more about those. I'm excited about um, the new the new Seeing Jesus Together and about going through that um, and looking forward to that. So we wanted to mention that in general. And I think for right now, yes, quite. says that the journal sign up is at the connect table. Perfect. Journal sign up is at our connect table right out here. So if you want to, and I think it's a QR code, you just put your name on it and say, I want two journals or I want four journals or whatever, you can reserve those um, ahead of time. I think there's a su suggested donation of like $10 per copy or something like that but uh, to help us recoup our costs. But that's the info. Let's take a little five minute break. Uh, you can grab some coffee, grab, uh, use the restroom, and I'm very excited. We have a guest speaker today. I'm excited to hear what God's put on his heart. So we'll be back together in about five minutes. God bless you guys.
or stationary? Uh, just to look right or left. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you don't need like an extra 30 feet on your no. cable. Mm -hmm. I'd probably cover the. Excited to uh, have guest speaker uh, today, uh, Reverend Matt Ortiz. 
And um, this is uh, a man who he and his family have served the Lord faithfully. And uh, he has um, uh, been part of at least two different, uh, leading two different churches here in San Diego over the last 20 years. And um, we just love his heart uh, for the Lord and really excited that he was able to come in and uh, preach to us as a church family. So I'm going to introduce him in just a bit, um, uh, or we'll welcome him in just a bit, but I want to read the passage and pray. And um, I also want to pass these out or hand these to people to pass out. These are uh, handouts uh, for the message. Oh, thanks, Rose. You're welcome. There we go. All right. And um, as they're passing those out, uh, the text for today's message is the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. And I'm going to be reading it off the screens along with you guys, all right? You ready? Ready. We got two. All right. <laughs> All right, here we go. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world was made through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to his own and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Glory is of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks before me because he was before me. For from his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only God. Uh, sorry. No one has ever seen God, the only God, who is at the Father's side. He has made him known. This is God's word. And as Matt's coming up, I just want to uh, pray over him and, and pray for us. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come together and worship. We pray that your word would have its work and you would have your way in our hearts and our lives. Pray you would anoint Matt as he preaches. Um, give him your anointing, Holy Spirit, and open our hearts, Lord, to receive. And we pray that you would change us, make us more like you. Use your word to wash us and encourage us and strengthen us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You guys will give Matt a big one. Well, good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Man, it is so good uh, to be here. I'm humbled and honored to be able to talk with you this morning. I, I met Vince a few years ago, a little more than a few years ago. Met him through some uh, uh, common circles that, that we were in. And from day one, uh, your pastor, Vince Larson, has been an encouragement and a brother and a good friend uh, to me. And um, I, I got to hear him preach for the last time a few weeks ago. And um, I was just so encouraged. That was just a time in my life where I really needed that exact message to build up my faith in Christ and who he is and what he's done. So you all have great leaders here. Man. Amen. You guys have amazing leaders. I mean, I'm not trying to blow sunshine or, or puff them up or anything like that. I'm telling you, I, if this is the only church that you know, you might not know how compared. Well, you're not supposed to compare, right? Now. You really got amazing leaders. And I, I visited you a couple other times. Once way back uh, when you guys were at the park and uh, Kenny was preaching. 
And he had one of the weirdest scriptures to preach on in the whole Bible <laughs> out of the book of Judges. Some dude made a vow to God to like chop up the next creature that went to, came in through the doors and it ended up being his daughter. And you're like, why is that even in the Bible? <laughs> you know? And if it's in the Bible, why highlight it? <laughs> Most people would skip that passage or just totally wreck it. And he would do a masterful job. And also, you know, we have some common friends and I kept hearing uh, this name Tom Fine, and um, he just sounds like a, just an incredible Christ-like uh, person who leads by example. And I met him for the first time a few weeks ago, and he absolutely lives up to uh, that reputation. Y'all have just welcomed me and encouraged me, so I'm just privileged and honored to be here. I should probably get on with my message, right? Because we don't have... Uh, they said, as long as I'm done talking, after about an hour and a half, we should be good. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be shorter than that. All right? So this passage is pretty heavy. There's no way I could do it justice in one uh, sermon. Um, it is a masterpiece of poetry, this prologue of John. It is just a true masterpiece. And you, once you dig into it, so I'm a little nervous preaching on this text. But... Uh, there are some guys who do a good job. People like um, um, Bible Project guys. I mean, they did a recent they did a recent podcast on this, and it was just brilliant. So if you have an opportunity uh, to listen to it, I mean, you will just be encouraged. They just dig deep into it. We can't get that deep into it uh, today, but I think that it is my prayer will be encouraged by it. So here's here's the deal. You live long, well, they're having fun over there, aren't they? Yeah. That's what you call a children's ministry. Dude. Dude, this church reminds me of Crossroads Church at Planet in South Bay, and, and it's just a similar congregation. I remember one time the kids came down from the children's group, and this one kid had like, like markings all over his arm, like full on tat sleeves. You know, he was like eight years old. I was like, whoa, what, what kid did that to your arm in the children's ministry? And they said, your son. It was my son who did that. Like, well, all right. Come on. <laughs> anyway, let's get going. Uh, here's, here's, here's what I know. You live long enough, you learn that life will sucker punch you. Yeah, you've been there, haven't you? It doesn't take long. And then you know that it's kind of part of life. First time it hits you, I mean, you can wreck your faith and your, you know, your view of humanity. And, and, uh, and God works in and through that. Um, you know, just this week, uh, I had three different people uh, representing three different families told me about something in their life and that happened to their family that just flipped their family upside down wrecked them i mean deep wounds scars that they will carry for the rest of their life like hardcore the worst kind of thing that can happen i mean that's just life in this broken world that's reality you can't ignore it so i've learned that no matter how long you've been a Christian, it is still so critically important to pray, especially when it gets dark. God, be real to me. Please be more real to me. So that my love for you is real, so that it changes my heart, so it changes my priorities, so it changes my perspective, so it changes my life, so it changes the way that I face the darkness in this world. You need that perspective if you're going to live for his purposes, for his kingdom, and for his glory, no matter what life throws at you. So we need to keep praying, be real to me, or be more real to me. So we're not just going through the motions. Jesus didn't die so we could play church. Yeah. Please be, me, be real to me. You know how God answers that prayer? With his word. Thank God that he gave us his word. 
And his spirit shows you in his word who Jesus is and what he has done for you out of sheer grace. So that you cherish him and that you cherish him more and more. And that he is your only sanity in this broken world. And the word shows you that God is with you and that he loves you. And that changes everything. And so I pray through his word this morning that you see God who became a man and who is with you by his spirit. It's easy to lose sight of that, isn't it? When all you can see is the pain right in front of your face. So let's fix, let's fix our eyes on Jesus and expect God's word to fill our hearts with worship this morning. There's a brilliant book called Knowing God by a brilliant guy named J.I. Packer. Any of you heard of this book or this author? Some of you have? Well, listen to what he says here. He says, It is no wonder that thoughtful people find the gospel of Jesus Christ hard to believe. For the realities with which it deals pass man's understanding. But it is sad that so many make faith harder than it need be by finding difficulties in the wrong places. And what are those wrong places? He kind of expands on that. He gives examples like, how in the world can the death of Jesus 2,000 years ago have anything to do with me receiving forgiveness today? Or... You know, I'm supposed to believe that, that Jesus was, was born of, of, of a virgin, walked on water, fed 5,000 people, raised for the dead, and that he himself rose from the dead? I'm supposed to believe that? Those are tough questions, right? Yeah. But Packer goes on to say, the real difficulty, though, does not lie here at all. It lies not in the Good Friday message of atonement, or in the Easter message of resurrection, but in the Christmas message of incarnation. It is here, in the thing that happened at the first Christmas, that the profoundest and most unfathomable depths of the Christian revelation lie. He goes on, the word became flesh. God became man. The divine son became a Jew. The Almighty was born as a baby. And he says, the more you think about it, the more staggering it gets. This is the real stumbling block in Christianity. Now, when you hear those words, the word became flesh. That raises a few questions, doesn't it? And we're going to kick around three of those questions. Those questions are on your handout if you, if you have them. And the first question is this. The first question is, what is the word? And there's four parts to this answer. And we'll begin here when you look at this crazy sentence in John 1 at the beginning. It says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Now, the, the age-old question is, what is the meaning of life, right? Everybody's asking about faith, religious or not. Yeah. Yeah. And all throughout history, people have been pursuing the answer to what is the meaning of life. Uh, this great question with some pretty creative ways through religion or philosophy or science. But John tells you that the answer that you are looking for is a person. The answer that you're looking for is a person. He says the source of life and the meaning of life is the word. And I'll introduce you to him. So what is the word? Well, first we see that the word is eternal. That's your first sub point there. The word is eternal. John starts with this phrase, and maybe it sounds familiar to you. He begins by saying, in 
the beginning. Sound familiar? Where else have we heard those words? It's the very first three words in scripture, and that was deliberate. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Before the beginning, before God created, nothing existed except God. And then God created everything out of nothing. And John writes, in the beginning was God. In eternity, before anything was created, the word already was. The word already existed. The word is eternal. Now stick with me because secondly we see that the word is creator, right? Verse 3, all things were made through him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. So where did the universe come from? Through the word. The entire universe, immeasurable. Where did it come from? Through the word. In Genesis 1, when God is creating, he says the phrase, let there be. He says that phrase eight times. And bam, there it is. Now, when you say, let there be light, <laughs> you still have to put down the remote, get off the couch, walk across the room to the switch, and flick it on, right? Or better yet, you have one of your kids do it. Yeah. Which is why we had kids in the first place. Yes. All right? <laughs> or you say, yeah, well, I tell my smart speaker, Alexa, let there be light in the living room. Yeah. It's not the same thing. <laughs> in Genesis, God speaks things into existence. Yeah. When God says, let there be light, bam, there was light. Why? Because God's word is power. Because God's word is a person. All things were made through him and without him was not anything made that was made. In him, in him was life. Meaning everyone who ever lived, everyone who ever will live, owes their life to the word. This passage goes on to tell us the word is light. Again, verse 4 says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And it's not just talking about physical light. The word also enlightens us. Now, I don't know about you, but I need all the enlightenment I can get. The truth is, I'm about as smart as I look. <laughs> it's funny because it's true <laughs> the word enlightens us and thank God all reason comes from the word and all wisdom comes from the word and you know what the word shines light on your spirituality to dispel the darkness the darkness of sin and the darkness of unbelief that lies in our hearts. John writes in verse 5, The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. <laughs> you know what? In the physical world, it's amazing. In the physical world, turn the lights off in this place. Just a tiny little light can dominate a dark room. That's how powerful the light is. And some of you need to hear that this morning. Life is dark for you right now. Wow. You feel totally lost in the darkness. Yeah. But thank God for the light. It's good. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> and the darkness has not overcome it. Amen. But there's so much darkness, it doesn't matter. The darkness does not overcome wow. the light. Verse 5, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Amen. All right. And the last part of this question, the last part, Fourth answer for this question. The word is God. The word is God. Now we're neck deep in theology now. Look at verse 1 again. The word was with God and the word was God. And then down a few verses, verse 14, John says, And the word became flesh. 
How many of you have heard that before? Yeah. How many of you have heard that for years and years? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm telling you right now, we don't know that. Yes. I mean, we don't fully wrap our brains around. That right there, the word became flesh, is the most mind-blowing statement ever made. And if you hear it, you know, yeah, yeah, I've heard that before. You're not thinking about it. Packer says, the more you think about it, the more staggering it becomes. And so it becomes powerful as you meditate on this amazing truth. The word became flesh. That, that right there is, is the high point of all scripture. It is a high point of all history. It is the high point of all creation. The word became flesh. God became human. How in the world do you wrap your brains around that? This leads us to our next question. Why? Why did the word become flesh? Verse 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. Now, it, when it says he dwelt among us, that can be interpreted as he set up his tent. That can, that's a legit translation. He set up his, his tent. God moved into the neighborhood. Now, God set up his tent. When it's referring to the tent, it's a reference to the Old Testament tabernacle. Yeah. In the Old Testament, when the tabernacle was set up in the wilderness, the Shekiah glory filled the tent as a visible representation that God was dwelling with his people, that he was there, that he was with them, that he was for them, right? But now we learn that the true tabernacle, the greater tabernacle, where God meets with his people, is Jesus. That's what the tabernacle was pointing to the whole time. And now he's here. Jesus is God with you right now, today, in your darkness. And do you know why he is with you? To make God known to you. To make him known throughout the world. That's your first sub point under this one. Yeah. To make God known. First eight, no one has ever seen God. The only God who is at the Father's side, he has made him known. Jesus is called the Word because Jesus reveals God to us. That's what Kenny's talking about how important CBR is. I mean, reading the word in community to see Jesus, and then when you see Jesus, you reveal Jesus. Yeah, that's right. John 14, Jesus says to his disciples, if you really knew me, you would know my father as well. From now on, you do not know him. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. And Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. That will be enough for us. And Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Now, the life of Jesus shows us exactly what God is like. You want to know what God is like? Immerse yourself in the gospel. And just meditate on Jesus and how he lived his life and what he did and why and what he taught. The life of Jesus shows us exactly what God is like. If you lived in Jesus' day and wanted to see what God was like, you just watched Jesus. And so what do we do here today in 2021? Here's how. You see Jesus through the eyes of those who saw Jesus and wrote about it. In the Gospels, you see the Creator and His power as He calms the storm and, and walks on the sea. You see the light of the world as He heals the blind and casts out the powers of darkness. You see the source of all life as He stands at the tomb of Lazarus, who is dead for four days, and commands Him to come out, and He does. Yeah, that's right. yeah. The Word became flesh to make God known. 
But also, the word became flesh to bless God's people. To bless you. Verse 16. For from him, his fullness, we have all received. What? Grace upon grace. Jesus came to bring you God's grace. We all need God's grace. And you see God's grace in Jesus' selfless life as he loved people and served people. You see it in his teaching. You see the fullest revelation of God's grace at the cross. It is the cross that is the very source of grace upon grace, wave after wave, relentless, never runs out. On the cross, our creator was crucified by his creatures. The God of life died. The light was snuffed out by the darkness. The one who was with God in the beginning, for all eternity, cried out to the Father and there was silence. The one who breathed life into each and every one of our lives. The one who sustains your life every moment of every day uh, by his own authority loses, loosens his grip. And the Lord of life dies on the cross. And he did that for you. He did that for us. Because he loves his people. Now, as painful as crucifixion was, it was also the shame. Hebrews 12 says, Jesus endured the cross, scorned the shame. Crucifixion was reserved for the worst of all criminals. I mean, people who were considered the scum of the earth. It was so incredibly shameful. It was illegal for the Romans to crucify their own citizens. If you know anything about Rome, they had no shame. <clears throat> and God chose to endure that at the hands of people he created. He chose to endure that at the hands of people he created. Now this brings us to our, our third and, and last section. Brings us to the so what question. How will we respond? This passage shows us two responses. There are two, only two options. First, some did not receive him. Verse 10. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not, his own people, his own people did not receive him. John says that from the beginning, God has been you know, planning and, and creating a life for us because he loves us. Uh, but the people he created and loves say, who are you? We don't know you. He came to his own and his own did not receive him. Now, did you know that both non-religious people and religious people reject Jesus for the same reason? self-righteousness both non-Christians and people who claim to be Christians, non-religious and religious reject Jesus for the same reason self-righteousness and we all easily lose sight of that I mean we lose sight maybe we've been going to church our whole life we lose sight of our desperate need for him and his grace you know what, I'm actually doing pretty good. Have a good week. God, you know, you can divert your grace over uh, to this guy right here because he really needs it. <laughs> well, we all do. I'm good enough all on my own, thank you very much, until you realize you're not. Life has a way of sucker punching. But... By God's grace, the second part, second option, some did receive him. 
and still do. Verse 12, but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Now, for those of you who are Christians here, you need to remember what it was like to not believe. You need to remember what it was like to not believe. You could not save yourself. And you know what? You still can't. You could not be good enough. And you know what? You still can't be good enough. You will always desperately need Jesus and his grace. And he will always give it to you. Wave after wave. Grace upon grace. That is what the cross was for. That right there is the good news. And that good news not only saves you, it changes you. That is good news is what changes your heart. It changes your life. It changes your priorities. So that more and more you live for Jesus' name, for Jesus' purposes, for Jesus' kingdom, for Jesus' glory, no matter what life throws at you. That is what fills your heart with worship this morning. That's the light in your darkness that gives you perspective. That's what fills you with life and strength because it all depends on the life and strength of Christ. Now, for those of you who are not Christians, but you're interested, you're curious about Jesus, it may be that you come to a point in your life where you finally see that you can't save yourself, that humanity can't save itself. I mean, just look at, look at the world we live in. Maybe you finally see we can't be good enough. Maybe you're lost in the darkness and, and now you're desperate for grace. Let me tell you something, that's a good place to be. It might feel scary right now, but that's a good place to be. And in the darkness, I wanna invite you Will you receive Jesus this morning? I mean, the ultimate Christmas gift. Will you look to the light of life? Will you receive him this morning? Will you trust him as your deliverer? The, the one who took our punishment on the cross for us so that we wouldn't be punished? Will you trust him today? Will you follow him and, and finally start your relationship with him? Will you give your life to him, your heart to him, your soul to him? You know what? He has been calling you to himself your whole life. And this morning, you're just hearing it from me. And next Sunday, you're going to hear from Kenny. You're going to hear from Vince. You're going to hear from any number of the people that are part of this congregation. God has been calling you to himself your whole life. And you know what? You may be sensing that right now. And if you do, that's the Holy Spirit. Um, I didn't, I didn't, I mean, just like the rest of us, I mean, if that's where you're at, you just need to know. I didn't see my, my need for the cross. God had to show me. I'm so sinful, it took nothing less than the death of God to save me. And yet that changes your heart and how you live. And then you know what God does after you get that? He works in you and through you to make the world a more loving, gracious, beautiful place. And the kingdom of God gets advanced because God advances his kingdom through those who receive him, through people like you. People still receive him. And if you do receive him, and those who have a long time ago, pray he becomes more and more real to you. And that happens best in community. Christianity is not a me and Jesus deal happens best in community centered on Christ and his word as we worship together and pray together and meditate on his word together. And I'll, I want to re-emphasize this because I think it's so important. I'm so stoked that you guys were promoting a CBR Journal. Take note of this website, the CBRjournal.com. Write that down. Get, sign up on the link that they provided. Get your journal with a determination to meet up with your brothers and sisters in Christ. Or maybe, maybe, maybe you're not a Christian, you just want to find out more about what this is all about. And you know what? If, if you can't afford the $10 donation, don't sweat it. That's why it's called donation. I mean, Vince will pay it for you. 
And then, and then he'll buy you lunch. And he'll walk you through the CBR journal so you get the most out of it, right? See, there you go. You're welcome. It's not just another Bible reading plan. It helps you realize that you're listening. God speak to you through his word. Ever wish God wrote you something? I mean, so he could be more real to you? He did. It's called the Bible. And I believe um, meditating on his word of community, it helps you see that. It helps you experience the presence of Jesus, God the Son, in a life-changing way. And it encourages you to do that in community, like a community like New City Church. I'll close with this. Fine. I happen to agree with J.I. Packer. The difficulty with which the gospel confronts us all is found in four words, the word became flesh. Jesus is fully God and fully man. As Packer said, the more you think about it, the more staggering it gets, the more it blows your mind, the more it fills your heart with worship, right? This is the real stumbling block of Christianity. And then he goes on to say this. But once the incarnation is grasped as reality, all the other difficulties dissolve. Yeah, so good. Yeah. So good. You start with Jesus, not all the other difficulties. Yeah. Jesus is the eternal word. Jesus is the creator of all things. If that is true, then of course his life would be filled with miracles, right? That's true. If, if he is the source of all life, then of course he raises the the the, the dead to, to life. If he, if he is a source of, of unconditional love, then of course he's going to share that life and love with all of us and then call us to share that same life and love and truth with others. Once you grasp the reality of, of, of Christmas, that Jesus is God in the flesh, it is unreasonable to reject any of this. Because then you'll see it finally fits and hangs together. It's a profound mystery, but it makes sense of everything else. So how will you respond? Will you receive him or receive him not? I plead with you to receive him, to trust him, to worship him, to know his truth, love, and grace, and then share that same, true, same truth, love, and grace with as many people as you possibly can, simply because you love Jesus. Amen? Amen. Would you bow your heads with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace. Your grace upon grace personified in Jesus. God who became man. God in the flesh. God, our finite minds can, can comprehend that. So we are eternally grateful for your Holy Spirit, knowing that, some, that your truth is spiritually discerned. And God, I pray that, that you would make that truth more real to us this morning, that we would cherish it more. And I especially pray for those who are, who are going through the darkest and roughest of times right now. Knowing that Christmas can even make it worse, the pain more painful. So God, I pray that you would provide the relief that we need by enabling us to fix our eyes upon Jesus. And may our worship become the healthiest and best, most life-giving escapism we could possibly do because it points us to the one who delivered us and gives us hope and new life. God, I pray that by your spirit, you would enable us to examine our hearts and, and look, look at the areas, shine a light on the areas where we don't trust you and enable us through the power of your gospel 
to confess that and to run to Christ for grace. God, we pray that if anybody doesn't have a relationship with you this morning, that that would be different today. <coughs> Surround them with people who love them, encourage them in the truth of the gospel and your kingdom. And God, I pray that we would worship you with every area of our life, with all of our heart, every day. We pray these things not in our own name. We pray these things in Jesus' name. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, God. Thank you for that word. Thank you so much. We're going to respond to the word that we just heard and take a few moments. And uh, the ways we do that is... Um, one, for, for prayer. If you're here and you want prayer for whatever it may be, any issue that's that's pressing on your life, or if you feel like now starting like you've been sucker punched this week, um, we have people in the back who would love to pray with you and for you. And another way that we respond is through communion and remembering um, that the Word became flesh and that one of the ways He showed us His glory and His grace the most significant way is on the cross and what Jesus did for us. That he died for our sins. He rose again to give us new life. And when we take communion, that's what we're doing. So I encourage you, if your faith is in Jesus, to take communion with us today. And we're going to uh, continue in worship for a song or two here before we dismiss. Hopefully as you hear this song, it's no coming to you well. We hope it has new meaning significance for today after you have concerned for now becoming black.
sing one more song. Join with us in worship. If you want to stand, stand with us. Yeah. 
We're thankful for that, oh holy night. As we end, I want to share a verse. I want to share a verse from the end of Jude. Um, and if you, if you would, you can kind of extend your hands out and just receive this as a word from you as we go into this week. From Jude, the last two verses. To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. I gotta read that verse again. All right. To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now, and forevermore. Amen. 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 God bless you. Merry Christmas. See you all here next week.